Skip resume. All of you can see my screen. I have a quick poll that I would like to take um, requesting your feedback. I'm putting it on the chat box here. It's a link that you can click. In this poll, what we are uh, trying to establish is what are the challenges that we have. So if what we are saying is data visual collection and visualization for my organization would be even better if my team and I could do certain things. So for your organization, it could be different. You may choose one or you may choose all the six. I would just request you to spend maybe a minute to go through it and fill in your responses. Is it collecting data in spite of internet issues? Is it easily accessing data and documents of existing and older projects? Is it having real-time view of the data collected from the field officers? Uh, is it rich dashboards? Would you want to create complex forms or yeah, manageable? Thank you. So the good to see the inputs coming. Great. Thank you so much for your input. So uh, this is very, very interesting because usually number four beats everybody hands down. But here, interestingly, in this cohort, I am seeing easily access data and documents of existing and older projects, which is you know very very different from the other. So thank you so much for the inputs. Um, the top is easily accessing data and documents of the existing and older projects. Second is access rich dashboards to visualize information from the improved decision making, and then comes having real time view of your data collected. So in today's session, um, you know, we're going to talk about the Hub app. In case some of you have interacted with us in previous cohorts, uh, let me assure you that in this session, there is, uh, there is a lot of changes, and this is surely going to be interesting and uh, relevant to you. Um, so with this said, I'm going to park this, and maybe we'll come back to this later. Let us move to a situation Wherein, let us talk about a situation wherein we have a project. Uh, we, we, we have a program called Sapna. Sapna is a livelihood program that is hosted by all of us. One large organization has given us a grant to go ahead and implement our livelihood project in three states. The states are Maharashtra, Karnataka, and Kerala. So before we kick start and start implementing in these states and four districts each from these states are selected, what we'll have to do is we'll have to formulate a basic questionnaire to understand more about the beneficiaries who are there. So in this particular sheet, what you will see is a very skeletal questionnaire that we have created where we want to understand a little bit about the beneficiary, their employment status, and with their consent, we are trying to get information about their families in case we are able to uh, you know, extend our services to them as well. So the first question here is, are we going to seek, uh, you know, we're going to seek consent and take this forward. So now what we will, uh, what we'll be doing is taking this onto the hub app and seeing as to how this can be created on the hub app application. Before that, all of you who have worked in remote locations would kind of agree with me where when we will say that, okay, when we first think of working in remote location, the things that bother us are, hey, how are we going to handle areas with network disruptions? How are we going to handle data disruption? Second is, if you're talking of Maharashtra, Karnataka, Kerala, one of the first thing that will come to our mind is there is a language barrier and the, and the field staff who want to help us collect the language. So how are we going to do this? Uh, everybody has a different everybody has a different uh, skill set. So it's not necessary that you expect your field staff to collect the data on the field and submit it without any glitches. So as a process, you may want them to collect the data, save it as a draft, and that they can come to the central office and get it vetted before it is submitted. Um, all my conversations a data collection form while we want to collect a lot of data the center or the focus is going to be field staff so it has to be very very for the field staff to go and fill in the information which means you should try to incorporate 
as much logics in your forms so that the data collection becomes very very simple and finally in many cases you may want to establish that the data is collected in the right location so you want to have the geolocation captured in our application just to clarify you are able to do all of these now let's move on to the application collection part of it now this is the app in which the data is going to be collected this is the form the skeletal structure that we are using collect the data can you hear me yes santosh yes can hear you oh okay great so let me just um, switch the presentation I'm having some internet issues. Just bear with me for a minute. um are you able to see the screen akila yes can see the screen yeah okay so some internet issues so yeah cool so here um we've made a short video so that uh, given that limited time that we have we wanted to capture everything so in this video we are showcasing how would you go about creating a form from scratch itself so if you see that this is the hub application you can go create a form put in the name of the form that you want and click the save button okay and uh, once you do that the 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 interface comes up and in the interface you can start adding your questions so you see the first question that we have is do we have consent to uh, their consent to go ahead and add them to project sapna we we put in the options as yes and no this particular question has to be made mandatory so we will select the option as yes then we next go to the uh, next question now the next question actually is a state and district question when you have a state and district if you are work with multiple district you will not want your team to see all the districts put together so if somebody selects maharashtra you would want to see the data of maharashtra and the other state so this is a standard template which you can copy go to cascading select and just paste that value once you do that what you will see is that the entire list of states and uh, districts come together this can be used for any use case that you may have when you want to do a cascading select in your case both of these questions are um mandatory so you will be selecting them as mandatory the next question that we have is we are asking for personal information about the user which is their name gender age etc so the name is a text field which is mandatory the default column name can be changed to suit your outputs so if you want to see the output as name of benny you can rename that as name as name of benny the second question that we want to put a put is uh, that of gender now in gender is a multi is a select one option which is between female male and others so you can put that all the three options and make that as a mandatory question as well 
at any point in time, if you want to change the name of the data, you can always do that. Age, if you see, age has, um, you know, age has a validation in place. So apart from the fact that it is mandatory, you can go back to the form and you can see that for the age, the validation is more than 20 years and less than 80 years. So you can put that validation also in your form in the front end. You can put in the validation here. And put in the validation for 80 as well. Okay. After which we move into the employment um, question, which can, which has got four options, full-time, part-time, daily wages, as well as unemployed. So you can put all of that. So all these four put together form the personal information section for the user. So I'm taking you through this so that you, you get a sense of things that you're able to do. Every question that you create, if you want the question to be repeated, there is a copy button there. So you can always copy and keep extending this across. So I can select all the four options and add it to a group, which can be then called personal. The next thing that we'll be doing is um, adding a question, whether they are comfortable to share their family member in information here. If they are comfortable, if they select yes, then only will we go and collect the family information. Now the thing about, yeah, the thing about the family information is that they, you don't know how many family members are there ready to give that, you know, extend their details to you. So you would have to make this as a repeat group. So in this, you can take name, gender, and age. Like I said, you also have the option to copy that information from top and you can copy the entire block and drag it here. This question is also mandatory. And finally, the age, which is the last question in this entire group. Once you put all these questions, you are able to then put in further logic. So in this case, age, if you want to specify the output, you can put age of family member and put in further validations as well. Now I can club these um, questions, which is name, gender, age, club them into a group, call it a family group. This is a family inf information. If I go to the settings, I, I will see, um, yeah. So here I'm going to add whether the skip logic. So these questions will come only if the first question is answered. So if uh, they are agreeable to join the Sapna project is when these would feature. Otherwise, these questions will not form part of your questions. Now you can add a, now the same thing, the entire group can be called depending on when. So if you want to call this group, if the district was answered, that is when this group will uh, come out. So first the state comes in, then the district, and, and that is when this particular group will open up. Then you have the information about the family members where, where they have their consent. And depending on that, this question will appear and finally the family information will come if they are comfortable by about sharing the family details. And here you can see that this is a repeat group. So you have to select the repeat group here as a logic.
So here you save the file and after you save the file, you get to see that this file is there on the system and you can deploy it. Okay, so now I can switch this on to uh, the view that you will see actually. Okay, so this is the actual view of the application itself. I hope you're able to see this. So in this, you have the project Sapna and we had created this particular baseline. I can go to the settings option. In the settings option, first thing that we saw is, okay, we have created this form. I can view this form, whether it is working. So if you see, if I press no, then there is no further question. If I, if I press yes, then the further questions come in about the state, district, and others. I put in the information about the family, uh, the gender, age, employment status. If they are comfortable sharing the family information, that is when the family information section comes on, and this is when the information about the family is put in. If I have, say, um, first family person's name, male, 24, if I have more, I can just click on the plus button if I want to in, in, you know, include, say, more members. I can add that and finally make a submission. So this is how you can make your form quickly. Um, finally, once you and if you want to edit the form, you can always click on Edit Excelis and make the changes that you want to. Once you choose to edit it, so for example, if I want gen, if I want to put a question mark here after gender, I can save it, shut this. What I'll see is that there'll be an option which needs to be deployed. I deploy it. All my version changes are captured here, which are able to see when are what the, uh, the versions done. And finally, you have got uh, permissions, so you will be creating teams of your own. As uh, you know, this particular view that you see is that of a project admin so project admin has got multiple functions they can create forms they can edit forms they can create teams they can give permissions to the team in terms of what they can uh, see one of the things that you wanted also was data management as document ma and document management so they are able to also manage documents we will come to this part later so as a project admin i will have my own set of teams i will have i may have a team which is a field team responsible to capture data. Uh, I may have my team leads who are responsible to ensure that the data is captured properly and that everything is work working smooth. And then I will have my m &E team. I can then go ahead and add users, uh, you know, uh, not users, members into my, uh, you know, into the respective teams. And once I do that, Whenever these members log in, they automatically have access. For example, as a team lead, I have given access to this particular ID, which is T4G. I'll share this with you shortly, and you can see what access you have. What do I do with these teams? Now that this form is created, I, I would want to give access to different people to do uh, you know, different roles. So like I said, T4G, which is tech for good, I have created ID, which is common for all of you. You are part of the team lead team. And since you are part of the team lead team, you can submit data, edit data, as well as view default dashboards. I will come to the editing of the data part. As a field team, you might want to give them permission to only submit the data uh, and not edit the data, okay? And I'll give them permission to only view the default dashboard. So I can manage my permissions here. Um, having said this, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask right now, or I'm gonna share uh, the login credentials for you to just take a peep into the system, uh, into the application and make some entries to this particular project, which is Sapna Baseline. You can click on add entry. And once you click on add entry, you can make some submissions. So you can have a um, real time feel. And whatever data that you put into the system, you can see it. And I'll tell you how you can edit that data after that. 
Okay, thank you, Santosh. Um, so if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself at this point and ask. You, it can be related to the organization. Uh, any specific use case that you have, you want to discuss that, happy to sort of, uh, um, I mean, please use this forum. And if you if you have like unstable internet, you want to leave, the, uh, leave a comment on the chat box, that's also okay. Thanks, Akira. Um, Santosh, just a quick uh, announcement from our side. Wanted to check if uh, the following names, if you could confirm the name of your organization, Aman, Navya Venkatesh, uh, Tejasvi, um, Vishwa, Vijay Reddy, Pavan N, Yashaswani Basu and Prachi Patel. Uh, if you guys could like drop in the names of your organizations in the chat box, please let us, uh, please do it in the chat box. Name of your organization. And any questions up until now can, uh, are welcome. Thanks. Um, so I've shared the ID and password. Please let me know if you're able to log in to the system. Sandosh, how is this different from the Kobo and other uh, tools available online for, you know, for free? Yeah, so Kobo actually is for humanitarian purposes and it is does not have uh, various features that you see in terms of, uh, you know, team management. It does not have, okay. uh, you know, to, so it is not built to manage an organization as such. It is built for you to go and quickly collect the data. So we ourselves mm -hmm. use Kobo as one of our backends, right? So we have built on top of this. And like you see in the later parts where there's a lot of, uh, you're able to take out data and visualize it outside. Uh, so we have built a structure which is makes it much more useful for large organizations yeah for larger small organizations so you're saying that kobo doesn't if if i i am to buy kobo kobo doesn't um, offer like many buy of the kobo? features buy kobo yes so buy kobo is much more expensive so our pricing is 5000 rupees okay which is way more compared to than which is probably one third or one fourth of what is in the market Okay, okay. Yeah, so I just yeah. wanted to understand. Yes, yes thank you. Yes. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for the question, though. It was really helpful. I hope you're able to log in. If you're able to log in, just put a thumbs up or set done on the chat so it is a bit more interactive. Uh, hi, Santosh. Uh, hi, Anushree. Anushree here from Civis. I just wanted to ask whether you have any discount for not for profit organizations. This is actually built for not for profit uh, and for tech for good. We are offering a discount uh, where you can take get one month. So if you pay for five months, you get six months. Oh, okay. nice. Yeah. Thank yeah. yeah, thanks. So actually, the cool part is yet to come. So just uh, stay tuned. Uh, are you okay? Done. Okay, Gauri, thank you so much. Can we have a couple of more con confirmations if you are able to log into the system, see it? Uh, Santosh, uh, I am Divya from Nisarga uh, Foundation. I need uh, uh, just one clarification. Right. Uh, here, uh, we can add a baseline survey data. Uh, I, I should, saw your whole presentation. Uh, we can add all the data. Um, here, uh, we work on land rights also. Those mm -hmm. fields also can be added, uh, like uh, in acres, the land in hectare yes. we mentioned, right? That can also be added. Uh, and uh, once we complete this uh, project period, like three years, after three years, we mentioned this much of land is acquired. Like uh, now the 10 hectares was there and then later it will be like uh, 30, 40 acres like that. Correct, and correct. Uh, can we get that comparison data, like uh, what are the basic documents we had earlier, uh, like comparison, uh, like baseline survey, and after the completion of the project, I'm going to add all the data, details in the same data. What is the, right, like that, right, can we right, have that yeah. option? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you said uh, Divya, right? Uh, yes. Did I get your name right? Okay, Divya. So uh, I will show... So in, in uh, this particular application, you, you may do a baseline in which you establish your beneficiary, okay? Once yes. you establish your beneficiary and they are like a, a you know pool that keeps on, it's, it's more or less stable. So it can keep on incrementing every month. What you can do is your subsequent follow-ups that you do, I will show that to you in the next round. You can upload that information there. So then all your subsequent follow-ups, you track it at a beneficiary level. 
and once you track things at a beneficiary level then you are able to track movements also okay okay is that is that was that useful yes it will be okay useful. i will anyway cover that and like you and since in your case uh, if there is movement of land so there are calculated fields in which you can do that also but anyway you can see the change uh, you know you can track the progress against every beneficiary that is possible okay no I, i'm just asking uh, the increments or the uh, achievements what we had done from the basic survey will the software give us the achievements uh, like the can we uh, draw the data from the software uh, data yeah, program I, you can draw the data i will also show how we are able to integrate it with a dashboarding platform on the okay. dashboarding platform you will be able to uh, compare things okay okay Thank yeah? you, sir. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much. So now coming coming back to this particular form. So thank thank you for everybody who filled in the data. If you see that the data is now there, okay. And um, in this data, for people who have got edit rights, you will have access to uh, these two fields here, okay. Uh, and okay. So you're able to hear me, right? I'm um, sorry. I'm asking this question because there is a bit of a. Yeah, Santosh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So let me go back in case this is not clear. So if you think that okay, this particular value that has been entered, um, so you have got so these are the all the all the entries made by T4G. Yesterday, you know, this morning my team had made some entries here, so it's all captured here. Now in this entry, I think that. um i feel after conversation that this entry of aman t from kerala ernakulam this should have been daily wage instead of part time so how do i go and make the edit i can go and click on this and since it opens up in the form any changes that you do the validations will continue so here i can change it to daily wage and i can click it so once i click it at the the value will get populated in the back end also so let's look for aman so here i can search for aman if i search for aman i get the value now let us see whether so i was looking at i had to change this to daily wage so i have done that daily wage so that data is now updated here so this is the edit feature that will be very useful in case there are some errors entry which you want to uh, fix now um, i hope this part is clear you know, after so again there are four action buttons that you can see here one is add entry one is data one is dashboard one is settings the way it is structured is that every organization will be granted will will get an organizational admin who is similar to an hr person now this organization admin will have the rights to add all the people who are part of the organization they will then say okay now we want to do a baseline project or we want to track the data of sapna so let us create a project call project sapna so they will create this project sapna and say that okay so now santosh is the project admin for this particular project since i am the project admin i will have the settings button which will enable me to do everything which this settings button does which is you know giving my team permission adding files creating forms and other features which i will cover later then you have got three other buttons one is adding an entry one is viewing the data and editing the data and one is dashboard so going back to the team if you sorry going going back to the structure if you see anybody who has submit data can add data anybody who has edit data is able to edit the data and view the data by default anybody who has view access can only view the data and not edit and anybody who has dashboard uh, you know default dashboard will get to see only default dashboard now this dashboard that i'm going to show you is a very basic dashboard to get to give you a sense of the overview of what is happening so for example i get an overview that okay there have been three users who have filled in data total of 29 responses there are five people who are not comfortable sharing the information 24 who are the district splits state split so this is a basic dashboarding that i am able to do 
okay now what if i want to do more then how do i go about it here comes the option of data share if i go to data share and i am i want to if we please watch this carefully we'll also share more content around this but how does this work so we will hit the create button okay this is where you are able to share uh, the data with a certain set of users so moment i hit the create button the system runs a back end job gives me a url so if you see copy url i copy this url after i copy this url i can go to google sheet and i can call this um, sapna project data okay now sheets has a function which is allows you to import the data so this is import data open the bracket open quotes i can copy the link close the quotes put a comma now this is a csv value so it will have a separator which in this case is semicolon so i'm going to put the semicolon value close it and shut this so a result of which is you will get to see the entire raw data will get updated onto your sheet we will be pushing this data at the end of the day for you to always see so this data can will always be refreshed for you by end of the days so automatically you don't have to expanively go and export the data now apart from seeing this data and running filters on this data what can you do so you have another free tool by google which is now called looker studio you guys would obviously all of us know data studio so i can create a blank report and once i create a blank report then i'm able to link this google sheet sapna uh one second sapna project data okay so if sapna project data select it and i'm going to add this into my google sheet now for the purpose of this call i'm going to show you couple of visualizations and then show you one sample output how it looks like okay now in this visualization it is showing me broadly okay how many people have filled it i can call this you know dashboard baseline okay so this is my dashboard if i want to i find what is the gender split of uh, the group that i'm dealing with i can put a pie chart I can drag and drop it here. I can change the dimension to and uh, change the font and formatting. If I want to see um, the split in uh, the states or the districts, then I can do that. I can update it. this information keeps on adding now for once you're able to do this um it will i'm just we just created a sample uh the saying for you to see so you can have a visualization which looks something like this where you can get a sense of okay how many submissions have happened what is the average age what is a male female split so in this if i am clicking on females i will get to see the data of all the females itself so everything changes around that there are five submissions if i click on male i can see how many male submissions what are the values if i have a table i can put in conditional valid you know um, uh, colors here this will this is highlighted in this color because the employment status is null so i'm able to see who are updated as null if i reset this anyone who is not employed is again highlighted so i'm able to quickly visualize it so the visualization aspect 
becomes much much easy you are able to also share this in a publicly so you can change the view to public to be able to share it to groups who may not have access to this uh, i can copy this link and put it back into my um project so if i see this project so you guys you also mentioned that data and documents so here we have created a document tab in which you can update documents of like dashboards financial documents any communication that you may had with the donors or the community members which is required process documents where you can list the kind of processes which are uh, which your team has to follow and they need to refer to uh, periodically under the dashboard i have already incorporated this field so i can just click on add document put a name and incorporate the link so i had incorporated this if you click on this then the dashboard opens up for anybody to see what is the status of the data that is getting captured so uh, this is how the data share works if you want to do a, a regular export of data that is also available so you can just go to data download and then download the csv once you do then there'll be an option for you to download if you can see the icon i can click it and it will take me to the download option so that's another way of downloading uh, you can download it as excel also and this thing the same values can be updated into an excel sheet into power bi into uh, you know google sheets it's very compatible across so you can take out data from from this particular platform very easily any question so far please uh, santosh i think siraz had raised his hand Okay. Uh, Siraz. Hi, Santosh Siraz here from MHT My Housing Trust. Santosh, I was referring to the edit that uh, uh, I think five ten minutes you were referring to. So let's say data has been collected from the field. The edit feature that you were talking about is someone who can make it at the office level, right? So you are making that edit directly in the Excel file or the form. Is it possible to red flag the data which seems to be wrongly collected, and you want your field staff to edit it going in their mobile application? that's an interesting point it is not there right now but it is actually there in a the next phase we are, yeah that's another thing that we'll be working on okay of, of flagging it off approving disapproving certain data so those things are, are, are next in um the value added things yes okay sir thank you yes yes thank you yes binoy hi santosh will there be an edit history uh, documentation if somebody edits and then another person edits Uh, right now the edit uh, option is no there is no edit history at present the edit option is restricted to only the project admins um and whoever you want to give edit is this thing to so right now there is no edit history for it okay so if someone if whom i have given admin access right has manipulated the data how will i come to know it's a matter of trust right it is a matter of trust like in all other um yeah platforms yes that is correct so i will anyway get back to you if this is possible binoy then well, i have noted this down we will this is interesting point so you know we have been doing this for a while now and we have incorporated lot of uh, so there are already 80 or ngos who work with us uh, in various capacity so uh, yeah so we this is interesting feedback and we will factor that yeah thank you Could you have another question from Nishant? Yes. Okay. Uh, Nishant, could you unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Yeah, Nishant. Uh, yeah, yes. we like I said, is this the Kobo Toolbox question that you had, Nishant? I can see that in the chat. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Nishant. No, no. I just, I just when you sent the form, I just clicked. It was showing the Kobo Kobo Toolbox, so no. I was curious to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing Kobo. much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, can, yeah. Uh, right, right, right. Nothing, nothing. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. Ah, uh, so I think Bavya also had a problem with the login. Bavya, was that sorted? Um, and it's okay if you weren't able to get it yet. Bavya. No, no. I'm, I'm not able to like log in yet. Okay, so you. I hope you're putting the uh, password without any spaces. So D uh, capitals and at the rate one two three four. 
and even the id doesn't have so if you copy paste at times you know they you may end up copying the space also just just check that um okay so i'll just um, progress if there's no other questions um at this particular point okay now we come to the uh, the other part which is uh when you creating complex forms you also have an option which is called xls form which is a universal um low code platform for you to create a uh for for uh, you to create a um form now for this purpose i have um one second okay so i've created a second project we call it the child health project in under which we will go ahead and create these forms so i'll do it again here you can see that there is a there is a there is a um, xls form that has already been created and this xls form has translation into hindi and some other features which you will get to see when we upload now in through the xls forms the added feature that you will see is uh, language translation calculations which are based on fields um you're also able to do much more constraints so i'll just take you through that now I go to this particular project i create a form upload a file i call it uh, ch chp baseline version 1.1 choose the file which is the baseline file and i save it as i save it this file is done i can go to version 1.1 and when i go to add entries you can see that this particular form has got multilingual so you can switch between multiple languages you can have features which are made read only so there are no manipulation which are there of uh, date you are able to put in select options Let's put the kid's name as vinay the child's birth the child was born last year jan 5th since the child was born last year jan you are able to auto calculate the age and this can be made read only so that there are no changes which are made in the front end put the child's birth weight as 3 height as say 90 and the current weight and height let's say i'll put it as 10 and 50 and i'll put in the vaccination status because that is what we want to track so initially i'm saying okay this is my baseline data of this particular child once i have my baseline data like one of the cases that you mentioned you may you will have to do a follow up so what do i do at that case i will have to create a follow up form when i do that follow up i will have some basic information which are already captured in my baseline like for example i will have the child data which you can see here like i have taken some sample in this i have got the child name i have got the date of birth gender their weight height vaccination status and how many polio doses have they got and then i have got the child name which forms a part of one of the drop downs so that <clears throat> the the values are matching with my child data so now let us go by creating that i can go to the hub upload the file chp follow up follow up version 1.1 Go to the XLS, put the follow-up value, and my follow-up form is done. But my uh, when my follow-up form is done, I still need to go and so you can see that my follow-up version one point one is done. But I need to put those files which I need to refer to because that is where my what my forms will pick up. So I need to go to the file section. Once I go to the file section, I need to choose the file which is child name, child data. and the name with this my form is complete if i go to add entry what you will see is that 
this is by default Hindi. I can change it. I can have the child's name. It can be auto filling. So if I say the child's name is Karan, then the state, district, birth information, gender, last weight, all of this can be pulled in. So one of the cases that you mentioned is uh, when I'm doing uh, you know land related work, you may want to prefill certain data which is there. Uh, already for your team to then take on. So in terms of where you started, that can be part of your core form collection at all point in time. And you can update the vaccination status, the current weight and height, and you're done. You can submit the data. So that is how you can use XLS form, which is low code platform. There is enough content available online. We will also be conducting trainings to uh, you know, enhance the capacity of the team. Uh, so this is another thing that you're able to do using Hub. Uh, once this form is created, everything else that I show, shared with you in terms of teams. So if I want to create a team, I can do that. I can call it field team. I can create um, team leads. I can add member to the team leads. I can add the ID that I shared with you. Once I do, automatically whoever is logged in will get to see this. So if I have this particular form, which is baseline, which I want the team leads to have access, I can say, okay, now team leads can submit, they can edit the data. And by default, when you are able to edit the data, you can also view the data and you can see the dashboards. So that is gives you immediate permission for you to start filling in the form. Once you fill in the form, the data will show here. Right now, there are okay. There is one which, uh, which was, which is being entered uh, by me right now. And then in the settings, you can go ahead and follow the same routine of sharing the data and, and accessing the downloads. So that's how that works. So this is the penultimate part of uh, the demo. Final part is going to be how the documents piece work, but I'm happy to take any questions at this point. Was this clear? Okay, cool. So uh, the final part is documents, where you're able to store the documents. Here you can create folders which you can, um, uh, you know, family, let's, let's call this process docs. And you can create a folder and you can add documents and you can link it. So anytime, anything that you want, you can always look it up here and take it. If there is any technical document which you want to extend to your team, that also can be made available here, which your team can readily access. Uh, so. Uh, that's pretty much it, how you can create multiple projects and have all your data in a single place. You may have one project or you may have five. Everything can be put together. You are able to store your documents, store your data, extract your data, have rich visualizations that you can customize yourself and uh, get going. The final part is uh, how much is all of this for? So in terms of the, in terms of the pricing, we're offering a value plan at just 5,000 rupees a month, which I was like I was sharing, which is uh, significantly lower than what you would, uh, you know, some some gentleman mentioned about, uh, you know, Kobo paid or ODK paid. Um, there are no limitations to how many projects, how many users. The entire feature is going to be made available to you. You can have a lot of submissions, up to 10,000 submissions per month, 10 GB of storage. We are always available uh, to guide you Technically, in case there's anything which is stuck, we will keep conducting uh, group trainings for uh, form building, etc., as, as well as uh, dashboarding. Apart from this, since we have been working this space, we also understand that at all points, you may not have the bandwidth to make the forms. So if there's a complex form, you can always reach out to us. We have a fair pricing of 900 rupees per hour, which you can leverage and get a form created uh, any point in time. So that's about our pricing. About our discount um, for this cohort, or you can take a six month sub subscription. You can actually take a subscription for any point in time. You can want to take a subscription for one month, two months. That's 
that's all possible there is no restriction however if you take a subscription for 6 months you get 1 month free um which means that if you pay for 5 months you get for 6 months of access uh you can always take gain access to this particular application and take it for a free trial up to 100 submissions per month uh, that's something that you may want to uh, check out um and in case you deactivate with us we will still host your data for a month in case you come back you will have the data for a month beyond which uh, you will not have access to that data so yes thank you so much i think that is that is where it is i think i have okay right. Yeah. Thank you, Santosh. Uh, you have a question from Lakshmi. I think you've mentioned this already, but if you could reiterate, um, data visualization can be done only by admins or by team leads too. Yeah. So data visualization, you can take it outside the system, and once you're able to take it outside the system, you can give it access to anybody in your team to be able to do it. Like I, uh, just to be clear, uh, you know. in case you want me to show it again i can or or in the subsequent communication i can share the uh, a short video about it you have to go to data share uh, and then you can get it okay you can you have multiple admins yes you can have multiple admins there are two type of admins just to be clear there is an organizational admin organizational admin are responsible to add users to the team then there's a project admin who the organizational admin will be uh, giving rights to and the project admin then takes over the entire project creates team and takes things forward yeah so there can be multiple admin in both places uh swapnil uh, what is the annual cost for you the annual cost will work out to 10 month cost which is 50000 rupees plus gst because we are giving a one month uh, free for every six month um for for this particular cohort uh kuldeep kuldeep pass i have a question can we use previously collected information to another form uh kuldeep you will have to populate it we don't have an upload function because then that will also mean a lot of data clean up um so up to how much is the discount i've mentioned discount is um one for six months for you guys do we intend for filling the survey no i i covered one of the key features is that in case of internet disruption you are able to uh old uh, you know you are able to store the data and then it will auto sync once you have internet connection yes any other questions please bina you are your hand up yes santosh uh, santosh we work with the government uh, the the department of health services and we operate uh, two mobile clinics uh, but the department doesn't want the data to be stored anywhere else uh, or uh, with any any other party or so how do we uh, you know resolve such challenges so it, it would want uh, the data in its server or um, or we uh, you know um, managing the data without access to uh, any other party so how do we resolve such challenges um see you, you will have to hold the data temporarily somewhere which you can then upload onto their system and delete it from this if that is okay that is one option you can look at because right now we do, because you know that see our our uh, the process that we have the product that we have is for something which is applicable to everybody now when it comes to give into specific survey it becomes very bespoke so we'll have to see as to how the handover can happen but the data will temporarily always reside here right are you okay. right That's no i i am i am yeah. uh, actually confused but i think no i'm saying that you know you will uh, the application will work on on this but on our platform correct which means the initial database also going to be there if once you finish your activity so is it an ongoing activity that you will be doing it is uh, it is an ongoing activity ah okay so then i am not sure how we'll be able to solve it if if i have some thoughts around i'll let you know sure. yeah yeah Uh, but now yeah. we can connect with Santosh at a later point also after the sure. session yeah, yeah. Uh, to right. discuss your uh, your your organization's uh, use case separately and we yeah. figure out something not to worry yeah it will be interesting to discuss this yeah sure cool thank you Katya uh Katya ni had a question yes so i just wanted to ask that the data that we will be uploading on this uh, i we wanted to know whether confidentiality and privacy clauses would be yes yes everything is there there's also a non disclosure clause which is there 
um so that and is it so will um will hub have access to that data or will only we be able to see it uh when you say hub will you do you say the tech team will have access to the data yes but we will always uh, you know so for example if you want us to create dashboards correct mm-hmm. Uh, or you want us to do so we we understand that in the social sector everything can you can't just build an app and hand it over correct many times you will have to chip in and then help mm-hmm. so obviously uh, it can't happen without our us having access correct so we will always have access but we will build in the level of encryption so that uh, you know and all this is not in, intervened by our team so we will have access but we will put in those clauses so that uh there is non disclosure which is covered yeah okay thank you and there will be no use of any of the data for any other purpose okay. yeah thank yeah. you any other questions this data thing covered cool Right. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. The session was recorded, and Santosh will be sharing this for the rest of the cohort. You can again go back and look at the session, um, and uh, look at what is. Uh, I mean, you know, go over the entire program demo again, the hub demo, and um, in case you need anything else, uh, you would always you can always reach out to us. please use this link to apply for the tool dataogram you'd get a special discount that is if you pay annually you get 2 months off completely so you would only be paying for 10 months uh, if you even choose the 6 months package you have 1 month completely off so you'd only be paying for 5 months um compared to the other tools that we've also seen in the past uh, this ha- happens to be one of the most cost efficient tools uh, and that's why we've chosen this for the cohort as well but if you want to have a one on one with santosh and his team to explore this for your or organization your specific projects anything that you want to discuss we can always set it up for you so please do let us know use the link in the in the chat box and uh, you can reach out to us